All right, so what I want to talk about here is um, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So the gram part is referring to a specific staining procedure that you go through in the laboratory. And, and essentially, it involves crystal violet, iodine, ethanol, and um, saffron. Okay, so there's, there's these parts to the staining procedure. And what happens is it allows you to, it's a differential stain, meaning that it will allow you to differentiate between two different types of bacteria. Okay, and it's usually one of the fundamental steps you're going to take um, in order to uh, distinguish, you know, and start to determine, you know, what what this bacteria is. A lot of times you're given some kind of unknown bacteria, you don't know what it is. One of the first steps and first things you want to do is gram stain it. Now the gram, now there's there's differences, okay, between gram positive and gram negative. I should point this out right now, and I will. That gram positive stains purple. So this stains purple, okay, and gram negative stains essentially red or pink, depending on how you want to call it. Um, so one stains purple and one stains pink, and essentially that is what get, allows you to distinguish which one's gram negative and which one's gram positive. Now there's reasons behind that and there's differences between the two. So the one of the things here, and I basically what I've done here is list the reasons why the there's a difference here and what the differences are. Um, and one of the things is that gram positive has this uh, thick peptidoglycan uh, layer in its cell wall. So what I what I mean by that is just I talked about in previous videos what peptidoglycan is and how it's constructed. And essentially, it just means that there's a thicker layer of it there, okay? And a thicker layer, you can almost kind of intuitively guess at this point that a thicker layer means it's probably going to be able to hold on to the gram stain a little bit better than um, gram negative, and we'll see why. So another interesting thing is that it only has an inner membrane, okay? They do not have an outer membrane. Um, in comparison here, the gram negative, you'll notice, have both an inner and an outer membrane, okay? And that's right here, inner and outer membrane. So essentially what that means is if they don't have an inner and outer membrane, then there's no porins, no lipopolysaccharides, okay? Um, you're not going to find porins are essentially channels through the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. It allows for the transport of um, substances or molecules in and out, okay? And lipopolysaccharides are involved in a lot of different things. Sometimes they're involved in attachment. They're also what causes the... Um, they're also what causes toxic shock. So when you're sick um, from uh, from an infection by a gram-negative bacteria, there's this, and I'm going to go into that in a second. But there is something that causes essentially the um, the fever and all that sort of stuff that goes along with shock. So there's no porins, no lipopolysaccharides, but they have this, you know, this specific molecule here called. Uh, I'm going to try and pronounce it. <laughs> uh, uh, tyric acid, which helps <laughs> which helps anchor the layers of peptidoglycan together. Essentially, um, what well, it's not important. You can you can write it down here um, and look it up and whatnot. But but what happens is, is it's, it's a unique molecule to gram positive bacteria. Okay, and that's why it's important. You're not going to find it in gram negative bacteria. And essentially, what it does is um, anchor the layers of peptidoglycan. Okay, together. Now, gram-negative, on the other hand, which I said stained pink or red, um, whichever you prefer to call it, uh, there's a thin layer of peptidoglycan in the cell wall, okay? And they have both an inner and outer membrane, and the outer membrane contains porins, okay? Once again, I said those are channels that allow for the transport of molecules across the membrane, and they also have lipopolysaccharides, and lipopolysaccharides have what's known as lipid A, Okay, lipid A in the lipid portion, and that is a toxin known as endotoxin. Okay, so that's endotoxin, lipid A, that's what causes shock. And there's also, if you think about it now, you have two membranes, so you have an inner and an outer membrane and a thin layer of peptidoglycan in the middle. Um, you also have this layer in the middle that's, that's or of space, you have this space in the middle. And this space between the inner and outer membranes is called the periplasm. Which, contain, which contains enzymes that assist in transport, okay? So it's called the periplasm. It's just another important part that you kind of need to know if you're ever asked to um, explain the differences or, 
or name five differences or three differences or something like that on an exam.